Happy Friday, everyone. I'm Diana Alviar. Welcome to Up to Speed Live. Yes, we are live right now. And boy, do we have a lot of news to cover and much of it good news. So Michael, let's roll the top video. We're going to be talking about innovation and how V-teamers are meeting so many challenges, specifically the Build the Future Idea Challenge and the 5G First Responder Lab. We are also revisiting our first ever Next 20 conversation. So moving, so inspiring, and we've got so much more to come. We're also going to give you some weekend plans along with some inspiration from a very cool and caring V-team leader. But we're going to start today with something that is happening right now. Real news happening. We're talking about Tropical Storm Faye, of course. Now, this is affecting the South through the Mid-Atlantic and even here in Jersey. It is raining. I can hear it in my house right now. I wonder if you're being affected. If you are, let us know. Um, lots of storms, lots of wind and rain expected, and of course our teams are monitoring and ready along the East Coast. We say time and time again, our networks are built for the worst that Mother Nature can throw at us, and our response teams are ready to help if needed. And you can also visit this place right here, Emergency Resource Center, for more tips on how to stay safe and find out what it is that the Verizon response team is doing. All right, let's go ahead and talk about innovation now. Specifically, we want to talk about our Build the Future Challenge. This is the perfect example of how we are helping individuals and businesses both during the pandemic and after with new technology solutions. So our 5G lab team, with the help of Verizon experts and senior leaders, narrowed down over 1,300 amazing submissions. And we've got our top three winners first on the screen here. Verizon first on scene. It was submitted by Jason P. Cruz, a solutions manager from the consumer sales and operations team in New York. Next slide, please. Now, this deploys drones, as you see, to rapidly assess and live stream emergency situations. So armed with the right information, those first responders can get the right response units to those scenes more efficiently. Next, let's recognize Voice Defense Plus. It is a business tool intended to protect your voice data, keeping sensitive customer data in-house so our small businesses don't have to send that out to a third party. It also reduces the need for their staff to manually block calls using self-service tools. And we want to congratulate the VBG team members responsible for this, Caitlin Davis, Sean McGowan, and Hans Van Arkel. They are all based out of Colorado Springs, Colorado. So congrats to them. And finally, let's move on to the third winner, Verizon Retail Evolution. This is a mobile hub that provides safe Verizon services for customers, such as a device check-in via our My Verizon app, a self-serve kiosk with a live solution specialist, and even on-site pickup ensuring seamless, efficient transactions that enhance the customer experience. And on the next slide, you will see that this was a huge and fantastic collaboration among V-teamers in New York, North Carolina, and Texas. They are all listed on the screen, but we're gonna say their names. Rajat Sharma, Vip Jha, Ivan Moreno, Daniel Newman, Sheikh Leah Kathali, Chris Falcon, Alexis Treviso, and B. Katapang. Now, these winning ideas will advance to prototyping this summer for potential implementation in the fall, and Verizon's going to be making a $10,000 donation to an approved COVID-19 relief organization at the recommendation of these winning teams. So, you know, in person, I'd just like to thank all of you, congratulate you for your innovative minds and making all of this stuff come to fruition. We are so proud of your creativity and your ingenuity. Now, speaking of ingenuity, we've got more exciting news. This from the first G First Responder Lab. We're announcing five new companies for the lab who are going to develop 5G-enabled solutions for EMS. So let's go ahead and see those names. Congrats to Biotricity, Rave Mobility Safety, Dispatch Health, Vuzix and Visionable. All of these companies are going to be focusing on solutions along the patient journey from emergency response to treatment and recovery. Now, these teams are also going to work us alongside Verizon 5G specialists and engineers on our 5G ultra-wideband network. So we want to congratulate them, and we are expecting incredible things from their work. Now, let's switch gears a little bit and talk about, you know, we talk about building the, the future through technology, but we also need to build the future through conversation 
and action. And that is exactly what's going to be happening with our next 20 movement. On Wednesday, we debuted our first conversation, and it was so good. It was focusing on criminal justice reform and listening to the personal stories of the participants. I have to tell you, to be honest, I started to cry because they revealed so much of the trauma that has affected them. But then you also find out why they're now inspired to make a difference. So go ahead and take a listen. And there's something that just is taken away from you in that moment that you can't get back. It makes you a part of a family nobody wanted to be a part of. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's a lot of families, impacted families in Vallejo whose loved ones weren't as lucky to to survive. And I and I did. And so as I like I, I came across these mothers at these at these protests and they would just, I didn't know even know who they were. And they would just run up on me. They would just grab me and say, baby, I saw your video. I'm so happy you alive. I'm so happy you here. I love you. Take down my phone number. Call me if you need anything like um, it just it, it it does something. And I think that I couldn't, you know, once you're a part of a family, you you know, you ride for that family. And so that's pretty much just what I've been doing, you know, going to the protests, documenting as much as I can. Um, uh, I made a, a short film called Favor and Grace that's in post-production right now that kind of brings it a little bit of attention and shines a light on what's going on in Vallejo and just trying to continually find different ways to be a catalyst for and help get those voices out there. It hurts not to be free, you know, it hurts not to be with my family. It hurts to see my family still struggling. It hurts to wake up every day and, and seeing myself change as a person, knowing in my heart that I'm a caring, compassionate person, that I'm not a monster like they said I was. I, I just felt like there was something deeply existentially wrong with what I was going through. And I couldn't quite put a put a put words to it, but I knew that this was just not the reality that I should be living because I was never truly a monster. And I just felt as much as I changed, if only the world had conformed to that, if only the world had seen me for who I was and responded to that, you know, in so many words, if only there was another chance. And fortunately for me, I had a light at the end of the tunnel. I knew that I would be able to get out in a matter of years. But for me, I find the people I represent and their families and the resilience and the extraordinariness of uh, what they have endured inspiring. And it makes me, you know, it, to, so it shuts up whatever in my head, whatever concerns or, con, you know, complaints I may have about it's late and it's work, right? Because people have endured so much more than I have um, and the resilience and the the humor, right? The grace, like, you know, the people I represent are unfailingly um, really remarkable people and interesting and fascinating. You know, they're just whole human beings. Right? Full human beings. And if you are inspired right now, motivated, then that is the point. We want you to take action as a result of these conversations. Look at the screen. These are all things that you can do today to make a difference from donating phones and gift cards. And then, of course, you can always donate to these organizations you see on there doing the work, making the change happen. And once again, this is just the start of our next 20. We started strong. We're going to keep it going. In fact, I am so honored and privileged to be hosting the next conversation. We're going to be talking about voting. This is a banner year for that presidential election, plus so many really important races and issues uh, down ballot in so many different places. We want to be as informed as, uh, as possible, and we also want to be inspired to go out and take action. So be on the lookout for that. Many more conversations to come. All right, finally, this is the weekend, right? And we want to give you some weekend plans. We're talking about the Rave Family Block Fest. It is summertime. It's a big music festival happening right now. The Rave Family Block Fest is a four-day music and dance festival happening on Minecraft. It is completely virtual. It features over 900 artists performing across 65 virtual stages. Now, this comes after rapper Travis Scott drew 12 million fans to his Fortnite concert in April. This is a big deal. These kinds of things are gaining a lot of traction, especially now that we can't actually be all together when we're watching concerts. So it's a big deal on these gaming platforms, but we need to think about, like, is this the future or is this going to change? Are we going to go back to doing concerts the old way? So, Michael, let's roll that shot we have of our LinkedIn article where we address this very thing. Uh, we're going to be talking about this on LinkedIn. We're talking about all of these issues. And then you can go ahead and weigh in with your own opinion.
Hi, finally, it's always fun to get to know our V-Team family members, and my why is the perfect way to do so. We get to hear what drives our V-Teamers, what makes them tick, why they are a part of this V-Team community and feel so passionate. And Belinda Harris, you are just incredible. It's so fun to meet you. Business, she's from the Verizon Business Group. She's a leader, but she's also committed to empowering and mentoring the leaders of tomorrow. So Chris, take it away. What's up, V-Team? It's Chris again with another installment of My Why. If you're not familiar with My Why, where have you been? It's a 20-part video series that debuts every week on Up to Speed. We explore the journeys, ambitions, accomplishments, and futures of some of our most dynamic and diverse V-Teamers from around the world. This week, we've got Belinda Harris of the Business Group. She works in product management in Cary, North Carolina. Belinda, take it away. My name is Belinda Harris. I'm a product manager in the VBG organization, and I've been with Verizon for 16 years. Right now, my favorite thing to do is probably bird watch. So I really enjoy just going out in the yard with the kids and setting up bird houses and feeding the birds. Before I joined Verizon, I was actually a college student. I was on the campus of New Jersey Institute of Technology, majoring in computer engineering. And I actually interned for two summers with NCI WorldCom, um, which most of you know now has been owned by Verizon because we purchased it. I was really impressed with how we were constantly iterating. At that time, our biggest product was DSL. And I think for me, I was just impressed at how it seemed like even though we were a big company already, we were Bell Atlantic, we were still pushing the envelope and trying to reinvent ourselves in with Fios. And so that really made me feel like it was a company that had longevity. What inspires me at Verizon is just how we're always looking to push the envelope and also how we're always thinking about how do we use our bigness and our strength to actually impact the world for good. I'm really inspired by how we always look outward and how that strategy has continued to grow as we've grown as a company. The work that I've been able to do through the ERGs with WAVE and launching um, our next WAVE Women in Tech Conference, which is now going to be in its fourth year. And it started out with just a vision of having this conference for women to come together and to develop, but also to learn about emerging tech. I'm really excited at, at how it's grown and how, you know, we've handed it down to the next generation of female leaders to continue to expand. I would love to be in a place where I'm empowering people more consistently, like as my as my full-time job. There's always been this element of helping people to achieve whatever it is they want to accomplish. And I can do it in a, in a variety of ways, whether it just be leading or whether it be um, something to do with learning and development or diversity and inclusion. I really have this passion around helping people to develop and to empower them to do things they may not you know, otherwise have known they were able to do. I have pictures in my background. I've taken all those photos, so I do like to take pictures. I like to sing. I don't know if that's really a talent, and no, I'm not gonna demonstrate it. And I also like dancing, but same thing. <laughs> I'm not gonna demonstrate it. Verizon is a fabulous place to come and grow. Verizon is also a company where you have an opportunity to solve big problems. I think it's just you being willing to look to see what those problems are. But I would say in every role that I've had here, there's always been a big problem that we were tasked with solving. From a perspective of someone who likes to ideate and innovate, that part of the work is always rewarding. Thanks for sharing your story with us, Belinda. Now, some of you out there might be saying, hey, I'd be a perfect candidate to be featured on an upcoming episode of My Why. To which I'd reply, stop talking to yourself in your home, that's weird, but go ahead and submit yourself for consideration. To do so, shoot us a quick email at good at verizon.com with maybe a story of how you got to Verizon, some of the cool things you've done here, whatever makes you a unique candidate for consideration. Lots of great V-teamers out there. Distinguish yourself. In the meantime, back to you, whoever you are. This isn't live, I'm taping this. Yeah, whoever you are. Well, this is live, Sirico, so I will take it back from you there. And wow, I loved meeting Belinda because when she talks about solving big problems, that's what this is all about. We're solving big problems. We're finding solutions that are going to empower and, and change our world. And Belinda, we're so lucky to have somebody like you. And stay tuned for more of the My Why program because it's so important to know why our leaders tick.
All right, and before we go, I told you this was chock full of good news and we've got more to share with you. Check out this tweet from J.D. Power. Congratulations to Verizon for ranking highest in, to, in the very small business segment of the J.D. Power 2020 U.S. Business Wireline Satisfaction Study. Okay, this is a big deal because here's the timing of the study, April and May, the heart of the pandemic. As you know, our small business groups were affected so hard by this crisis and the fact that we were standing next to them the whole way and it shows and we won this award shows that the work you're doing matters so our v team community you need to keep up the great work because you rock all right again stay safe this weekend some of you are experiencing that tropical storm Faye. you want to make sure that you stay inside you've got plenty of things to tide you over and also know that our Verizon crisis teams are ready to assist in case anything happens. Isn't that nice to know? Isn't that great, great peace of mind going into the weekend? So once again, I just want to thank you for spending some time with me and sharing your lunch hour with me. I'm Diane Alvear, and until next time, you are up to speed. <laughs>